and now give the floor to the representative of Ghana. Thank you, Mr. President. Ghana joins previous speakers in expressing appreciation to the Japanese presidency of the Security Council for convening this open debate on addressing complex contemporary challenges to international peace and security and to the Secretary General for his comprehensive brief on the subject. As rightly pointed out in the concept note for this debate, our world today is witnessing the negative influence of complex driving factors that pose a serious challenge to the ability of the United Nations to fulfill its primary responsibility in the maintenance of international peace and security. My delegation therefore welcomes this open debate, which follows in the series of thematic debates that have been held at the Security Council in recent years on topics including the interlinkages between security and development, addressing the root causes of conflict, peace and security in Africa, focusing specifically on the impact of climate change on security in the Sahel region, conflict prevention and sustaining peace, as well as other themes bordering on human rights, economic and social advancement, gender and youth perspectives on peace and security. The cumulative outcome of these debates have reinforced the validity of the words, and I quote, we will not enjoy development without security. We will not enjoy security without development. And we will not enjoy either without respect for human rights. These words are contained in paragraph 17 of the report of the Secretary General entitled In Larger Freedom Towards Development, Security, and Human Rights for All. Mr. President, there is no denying that compelling arguments have been made for a wider conceptualization of what makes for a peaceful and secure world. The need for holistic and integrated approaches to addressing contemporary challenges to international peace and security has also been duly acknowledged by the membership of the United Nations. Resolutions 2282 and 70-262 adopted by the Security Council and General Assembly simultaneously on sustaining peace, signal the normative and conceptual shift to a more proactive cross-pillar and cross-sectoral approach and strategy to preventing conflict. What remains outstanding is our ability to define effective system-wide mechanisms that will put the strategy into operation and foster better interaction between the Security Council and other United Nations organs, agencies, and bodies to address these challenges. While the causes of crisis are closely interlinked, our responses so far remain fragmented. In today's globalized and interdependent world, changes to international peace and security, ranging from the if challenges to the international peace and security, ranging from the effects of climate change and environmental degradation to infectious diseases and pandemics, terrorism, transnational organized crime, including drug and human trafficking, nuclear proliferation and proliferation of small arms and weapons, genocide and human rights violations require coherent responses across pillars from all parts of the UN system and from member states. Since factors affecting one country quickly take on regional and transnational overtones and have the effect of destabilizing adjoining countries and regions, our failure to effectively handle conflict multipliers will continue to result in the cycle of prolonged and aggravated conflicts, compound the plight of people suffering in conflict situations, and lower the threshold for conflict. It is important, therefore, to work across the United Nations system and to break down silos across the development, peace and security, and human rights pillars in order to meet these challenges. The Security Council would no doubt benefit from enhanced collaboration in this regard. Working closely with the relevant organs and bodies of the United Nations, the Council's capacity to play a preventive and mitigating role will be enhanced 
through the exchange of formal documentation or structured dialogues on the security implications of development-related issues, including those issues that may trigger violence, crisis, or conflict. My delegation is also of the view that these discussions should be well situated in the current process to reform the peace and security architecture of the United Nations. One of the key elements in the Secretary General's reform measures within this pillar is the role envisaged for the UN System Chief Executives Board for coordination and strengthening the organization's prevention and peace building work. As we await the Secretary General's comprehensive report on the proposed reform measures in the coming months, this might perhaps be an opportune time to further explore how the envisaged restructuring and new organizational culture will inure to enhanced collaboration within the security, with the Security Council for a more coherent and integrated approach to addressing contemporary challenges to global peace and security. Mr. President, my delegation wishes to reiterate the need for strategic and inclusive partnerships to be nurtured and further developed with regional bodies, NGOs, and civil society groups that have a stake in peace. There is much to be gained from increased support and collaboration between the Security Council and regional and sub-regional organizations such as the African Union and the Economic Community of West African States in developing the appropriate human and institutional capacities towards our collective effort for the maintenance of international peace and security. The United Nations mission for Ebola emergency response, which Ghana had the honor of hosting, and the inception of the African-led international support mission in Mali, which was the precursor to the United Nations multidimensional integrated stabilization mission, were two of such partnerships that really made an impact in ameliorating crisis situations. Mr. President, the United Nations has acknowledged the importance of taking a comprehensive and integrated approach to complex challenges to international peace and security in today's world. We have a number of relevant reports of high-level panels that presented us with recommendations on how our organization must work to address the multifaceted and complex nature of existing and emerging threats to international peace and security. We have an opportunity now to apply these far-reaching recommendations in the work of the organization, together with the much-needed reform of the peace and security architecture. Conflict prevention and the culture of prevention needs to be adopted not only by the UN, but by all of us member states. Peace building and sustaining peace go hand in hand with SDG Goal 16, promoting just, peaceful, and inclusive societies. And it is Ghana's view that effective strategies across the entire UN system to support the implementation of this goal will ultimately lead to the effective maintenance of global peace and security for all of humanity. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Ghana for her statement.